Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I am super duper excited <laughs> to be here. Oh, my God, you guys. I still have a little stuff up nose and congestion, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if I sound all nasal, nasally and if I cough into the mic a few times. Um, but what's funny is, is that these lingering symptoms and what it's from is the inspiration for the show today. So I'm going to call this sucker resisting a rest. <laughs> oh my God, I cracked myself up. Resisting a rest. Okay, let, what do I mean by, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that, KK? Okay, here's the deal. So if you... <coughs> If you're on my email list, and if you're not, what are you waiting for? Come join me, karenkinney.com slash sign up. Uh, come and get on the list. Um, I send out fun email newsletters, tell little stories, and people on my list get the heads up about uh, new, new whatever, new events, new offers, new shenanigans, new whatever is going on. And in fact, I just announced that The Nest, my spiritual membership, mentorship, uh, and community is now open uh, for new members and it is staying open. So you guys, you already, if you're not on my list, you missed that fun little announcement. But um, let's get back to today's show. So um, I sent out a newsletter last week and the title of it was, I suck at being sick. <laughs> And it was a funny story about how um, my sweetie wasn't feeling good. Turns out one of the guys, uh, you know, in his one of his bands wrote to him and said he tested positive for, for COVID. And my sweetie took a test and he came up positive. And it was like, oh, we had made it like two years without getting it. And so then um, I was feeling under the weather and I have a wicked strong immune system. Other than irritable bowel system, you get says irritable bowel syndrome you guys my body is a champ like my body is just like so strong and healthy and good and i have so much appreciation for it so for in order for me to get sick it takes like a serious bug like it takes a serious thing to knock me on my ass so i started to feel a little under the weather and i was just like nope not and i was just like nope just keep my mind positive you know like all that stuff uh, I took a couple of tests. My first two tests were negative. I was like, yes, maybe it's just a little cold. And then the third at home test, I came up positive as well. And it kind of like knocked me on my ass. And so at one point I just looked at my sweetie and I said to him, you know, uh, and I'm just recounting this. If you got, get my newsletter, you may have already read this, but just stay with me. Cause I'm going to, I'm just going to wrap it up quick. But, um, I said to my sweetie, being sick is stupid. And he said, that's because you suck at being sick. <laughs> and I couldn't even argue with him because it's the truth. I do. I totally suck at being sick. And, but I said to him, like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I suck at being sick. And he made me this list and it was really funny. So he made the, me a list about, um, why I suck at being sick. And I wanted to share it with you guys at home. Those of you who are listening um, not only for your amusement, but in case you might recognize some of these in yourself. Now, I'm not pointing any fingers, wink, wink, right? But you know who you are. You will recognize yourself when I read this list. And the thing about this newsletter and why I'm sharing it with you here on the podcast, but I'm going to expand on all of this, right? This is just the lead and this is the story and the inspiration. Um, why I'm sharing it with all of you here is that I got so many, <coughs> excuse me, I got so many responses from people. My inbox like blew up. People sent me DMs, people texted me, people like whatever. Uh, but it was just, it was a huge response to this email that I sent out. Um, and so many people said that they recognize themselves in it. So here, here to my listeners, here are the I'm calling this the six stages of sucking at being sick. Okay. So number one is denial. This is my sweetie's list that he wrote about me. Number one, denial. He says, you flat out don't like to admit or accept that your body is sick. <laughs> Just double amen hands if you, if you feel it, what I'm saying. Number two, stage two of sucking at being sick, resistance. 
He said, you don't like to take it easy, maybe one day at most. And you certainly don't like being, quote unquote, forced to rest. Oh, my God. So true. Number three, resentment. He said, you get angry at the cold, flu, or sickness. You think it's a waste of time and that being sick is stupid. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I could argue with him about these. But they're true. Okay. Number four, impatience. You want to speed up the healing. You ask questions like, when will this end already? <laughs> All right. Number five, acceptance. Ah, finally. He says, you finally take some Advil or whatever, and you rest, but begrudgingly. <laughs> and then number six is false stats. So this is when I start to feel a tiny bit better. And then I take that as a sign to tr try to start doing things around the house. All of a sudden, I'll be like, oh, I should move that. Oh, I should do the laundry. Oh, I should do that. I'm starting to feel a little better. So it's a false stat. So... um one of my false thoughts when I was sick is I was like all of a sudden decided that I was going to do the laundry because when my sweetie first got sick or got diagnosed, um, you know, his test came back positive. We were quarantining. So he was in like the, uh, my, my second office, like the spare room. And I was like, all right, I want to, I want to wash the sheets on that bed and like do this whole thing. And like I break it down, but you know, that scene in the wizard of Oz, at the very end when they accidentally throw the water on the Wicked Witch of the West and she starts to go, I'm melting, I'm melting. <laughs> like that's how I felt after I was doing the laundry and going up and down the basement stairs. And when I was trying to make the bed back in the room, like I just got so tired. And here's a picture of what happened to me. And <laughs> those of you that are watching, you'll see it. For those of you who are listening, I'll describe it. So this is a picture of me on the spare bed halfway through making the bed. And I was just like, I can't, I am melting, I'm melting. And I just basically like face planted into a child pose, like on the bed. So I'm basically on my, my hands and knees with my face right in the bed with my arms alongside my body, my hands down by my feet. And I just was like, oh my God. And I realized, I realized my false stat mistake of thinking that I can just, oh yeah, I'll just go back to doing a bunch of shit, you know? So it was a pretty fun, funny thing. And one of the things that I realized is that, um, obviously uh, I, I'm sharing with this partly to make you laugh because it's, it's funny shit, but um, it's also to extend some love. And what do I mean by that? So um, again, the outpouring of response that I got to those pictures, to what I wrote, to those six stages of uh, sucking at being sick. You know, what I realized is I heard from so many people who said to me, you know, I just don't, I suck at being still is really partly what it is. And we'll get into that, right? People don't like to slow down. People, a lot of people, especially if you came up like I did um, in the blue collar kind of world, um, you know, we were ingrained at a very young age to work hard, to always work, to constantly work that, um, you know, we had to work to like make money, to meet the bills, to pay the bills. And while I appreciate um, hard workers, I'm one of them myself, while I appreciate that, there's also something there where if we don't allow ourselves to slow down sometimes we're not going to have uh, we're going to get to some other deeper things but let's just talk physically for a moment if we don't allow ourselves to slow down we don't have the opportunity when we legit have something going on in our bodies to recover to rest and to heal and i know it can feel challenging sometimes again especially if you're a blue collar kid uh, to take that time to rest but the, the pushback against resting is really, um, it's just an old pattern of subconscious programming that um, not only can we let go of it, we can let go of it and replace it with more helpful ways of thinking. And that's wicked exciting. And that's part of the work that I'm doing with myself, with my hypnosis and my hypnotherapy is learning to reprogram my brain um, because the brain has created a particular chemical cocktail in my body. And this is true for everybody. And I'll, I'll do a whole other show on this. 
that likes to kind of like, for lack of a better word, I like to vibrate at a particular energy level, right? There's a particular chemical cocktail that my body says, oh yeah, this. And whether that's adrenaline and cortisol and dopamine and like all those things that are like, oh yeah, 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 we like this cocktail. So when we slow down, when we take a rest, when we take a break, we often start to feel uncomfortable. We feel discomfort, right? For some people, they start to get anxious or whatever because your brain is starting to recognize, oh, this is an unknown, right? The brain loves to keep you in what's familiar. So when you start to do things outside the context of what it's used to, it's like Danger Will Robinson, right? Starts sending up all these flares like, hey, what's going on? We don't like this. This is uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So I'm happy to report that I'm making some progress in this area. I mean, I canceled a call. I, um, I um, actually rescheduled a call, canceled a call. Um, and I really uh, tried to take afternoon naps. Like when, when I was going through this, <coughs> this healing process, I really even did that. And I've been using, like I said, I've been been aware of the, the brain science of all this. I've been using subconscious reprogramming with hypnosis and also always, you know, my spiritual tools. And partly one of the things that I do, and maybe you'll find this helpful too, is one of the things that I try not to say is I am sick. What I will say instead is my body is healing from, my body is recovering from, my body is getting better at, right? So there's a really helpful tool, and I'll, I'll share more about the origin of all this um, later on. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, the gentleman's name, but a wicked long time ago, this guy came up with this thing, and this is one of my mantras that I said, and I wish I knew off the top of my head what it was. Um, but um, I'll give credit in the next episode or something, but he basically said, um, every day in every way, I am getting better and better. And this is what I said to myself every single day, every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. And um, this is a little kind of subconscious reprogramming. You can also call it a mantra if you want, but it's, I, I would rather, I would really just call it more of a subconscious reprogramming um, tool. But this is something that I said to myself like every single day. Um, and I guess I, I wanna share all this with you. Like I said, because it touched such a nerve in the community, and how many people, like some people, the things they were writing to me is like, I'm resisting resting right now. I'm so exhausted. I kept hearing from people, I'm so exhausted and yet I still don't let myself rest. I heard from athletes who were like have conditions that are like pretty serious. And they're like, even with all the pain, I don't stop. I make myself go and go and go and go. And so this really touched on something in my heart. And I just thought, you know, I wanna speak to this because we sometimes need to give each other like permission slips. You know what I'm saying? You know when they you said when you were a kid and you had to go to the bathroom, they'd like write you a hall pass and you get that little pink permission slip to be in the hallway, like up to no good usually, right? Um, but get the permission pass to say. Um, and we shouldn't, oh, I don't like to use the word shouldn't. It would be, I think it would behoove us. It would be better for us if we could simply just give ourselves out of some compassion and kindness, um, permission to rest and to stop resisting a uh, rest. But um, we often don't do that. So sometimes it takes somebody outside of us um, that maybe we relate to or connect to or trust or whatever. And I'm not making that assumption that you have those things with me, but in case somebody's listening who does, take it from a total blue collar kid who busts her ass and work really hard. It is okay to take a rest. Uh, one of the things that I had to start to reprogram in my mind um, is also this concept that resting is not weakness. Resting is not weakness. And I've told this story before about how um, one of my old business coaches, Bill Barron once said, um, you know, he said, this is something he was practicing and it, it really impacted me. And it was a simple statement. And it simply said this, when I am tired, I will rest. And it affected me so much. And I just thought, oh my God, like that's fucking brilliant. Like why hadn't I ever thought of that? Because <laughs> it doesn't naturally occur to us, those of us who are really good doers. There are those of us who are really good doers. I call us 
the workhorses of society and knowing my human design, which is I'm a generator. The generators are the ones who like generate the energy in the world, right? So it made so much sense to me when I realized like, oh, of course I'm a generator. That makes so much sense. And so we have a great capacity to do and to do many things. But here's the thing, you guys, just because we could doesn't mean we should. Just because we can doesn't mean it makes a whole lot of sense to do it. I can do a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that it is the best for me, the other person, the program, the product, the project to do that. In fact, you see a lot of people acting as if they're, um, you know, they're actually really good at multitasking. And I've said, I've, we've debunked this myth. The scientists have debunked this myth. There is no such thing as multitasking. We want to be single tasking. That's what I always say. Let's get, let's kind of start to focus on trying to single task. And sometimes the single task we should be doing is fucking sitting down and shutting the up and resting. You know what I'm saying? Like just grab a cozy blanket, get your favorite furry kid, whatever it is, lay on the bed, lay on the couch, cozy up and just relax. And if that freaks you out, if, you, if some part of your brain goes, well, that's just a waste of time. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'll rest when I'm dead. I can suck it up, right? Look, I, I'm the champion of sucking it up and stuffing it down. But we're not doing that anymore, okay? We're not going to do that to ourselves anymore. So this is an invitation to stop resisting having a rest. Now, when Bill Barron said that, when I am tired, I will rest, it, it made such an impact on me that my friend Casey, and I've told this story before on the show, she made me this little sign. <laughs> it literally says that on there. She gave it to me for my birthday as a reminder um, that it's okay for me, um, you know, to take it easy. And um, I actually don't have a hard time being still um, as somebody who's been, you know, had a daily spiritual practice for a really long time. Uh, staying still for for um, prayer, for meditation, for contemplation, like even like, um, you know, in yoga, we often say as yoga teachers, we often say, you know, the hardest posture, the hardest asana, the hardest pose for most people to take is not all the fancy ones. It's simply shavasana, just resting and being still can be one of the hardest things for people. And especially also if your nervous system, remember, you got that chemical cocktail that your brain has produced that likes to feel a particular way. And when you shift out of that, and you try to like, you know, downshift and slow down, it can start to feel like a little like, ah, this is unknown. I don't like this. Right. But also your nervous system has been um, wired in a very particular way. And the synapses in your brain, the neural networks have been wired in a very particular way. So it's not usually something we can just do like that. It takes time and it takes practice. Who would ever think that we'd have to say, I have to learn to practice resting, but you guys, it's true. Um, and I want to share with you like, um, well, let me just say this first. <clears throat> Part of it is because this is, this is just my own theory. I, I have not done any scientific research, whatever. But this is just my own sense of things is that the more these little devices, holding up my phone, more of these little devices, right? So it started off with like phones, phones ringing in your home, like, like interrupting the silence, right? And then we had answering machines, answering services, pages. Remember pages? We would literally clip these things onto our body so that people could go like, hey, trying to reach you, right? So that, that separation, let's just call it healthy, that healthy divide between you and your work, between you and what you do from, let's just assume nine to five, right? There was a nice healthy separation. There was no emailing you at home or no emailing you at night or no emailing you on the weekends. So then we start to have um, cell phones in the cars. Then there's actual cell phones like on your body, on and on and on. Then it's like instant messenger, text messaging, DMs, FaceTime, there's iPads, there's iPods, there's desktops, there's laptops, there's like, you name it. There's Kindles. There's like a thousand ways to be distracted and to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For other people to reach you 
to kind of move it, invade your privacy. Let's put it that way, right? To step into. So I, I've talked about this before. Like when we were kids, the only way that you could get to us is somebody had to call your house and you had to answer. Uh, this was before answering machines, right? They just called. And if you didn't answer, they were shit out of luck. Or they could physically show up at your house and you could just choose not to answer the door. But there was very minimal ways for the outside world to get into you, right? To um, put their little hooks in you. With the invention of all these machines, I think somewhere along the way, we started to think that we're supposed to act, respond, and behave as if we were also machines. And I hate to break it to you, while the mind is a very powerful, quote unquote, sometimes called a computer, right? We are not fucking machines. We are human beings. We are spiritual beings in these human bodies having a human experience. But who we are is not machines. So we don't like even at the end of the day, like, you know, when you think about even think about the news, like how the news, the 24 hour stations, right? It's just like, oh, my God, it's constantly an ongoing assault on listen, read, be aware, respond, consume. I'm like, what about just stepping back and being able to take a breather? Look, even Van Gogh, we're going to look at this. This, I think this is from the 1890s, maybe 1800s, right? Look at this painting of his. So I'm holding up um, a, a painting of Van Gogh's. And this one, um, I think it's called uh, Noon. Yeah, the, this painting is called Noon, Rest from Work After Millet. <clears throat> and it's from 1890. And what it is, is you can see in the background, a huge bale of hay. And then in the foreground, there's also a huge bale of hay. Uh, in the background, there is an oxen cot. So there's like, um, there's some uh, oxen, right? That like would drive the field, plow the field, pull, pull the little um, thingy mabobby. Um, they're having a little snack. They are untethered from their um, cot that they were pulling. And in the foreground, it looks like there's a man and a woman and they're just laying. And he has his hat. They're laying against the big bushel of hay, the big thing of hay in the foreground. And they just have, he has his hat like tipped down and she's laying on her side with her eyes closed and they're both resting and he has his shoes off and it looks like there might be, I'm not sure what they are. Maybe they're sickles, you know, for like cutting millet or whatever, but it's a beautiful image of these two people that are just resting and it's called noon rest from work. So even Van Gogh understood that the body needed time to rest, to recover, to renew, to relax, to replenish, right? Back then where you had to do manual labor, there weren't all these machines to do it. So the human body knew to rest. And let's take it a step back even farther. So here's the whole thing. I always say this, right? Raise the Catholic kid. Um, not, I don't know a lot about the Bible. <laughs> I don't know a lot about a lot of things. I don't know if anybody would say I was a good Catholic kid, even though I went through all the, you know, rigmarole of, uh, getting, uh, baptized and confirmed in my, um, making my confirmation and all, all that stuff. But <clears throat> this is helpful. Whether you're a person of spiritual means, I, I can't imagine you listen to the show if you're not kind of a spiritual person, but even if you're not a religious person of any kind, right? And spirituality and religion, different things. But <clears throat> if you've, you probably have heard of the Sabbath, okay? The word, the Sabbath. And the word Sabbath, right? It comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat, and, uh, which essentially means a day of rest. So apparently, right, like if you look at the Ten Commandments, now look, I'm not saying you should like follow the Ten Commandments. What I'm saying is there's a wisdom here. So don't get hung up on the source of where it came from. Don't be all like, oh, this is the Bible. I'm just saying, step back, look at the more applicable wisdom of this, okay? So the Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat, which essentially means a day of rest. So in the 10 commandments, there's a commandment that basically says, keep the Sabbath holy. All right. Keep that day of rest holy. And there's a reason why. And it says here, I'll just read this little snippet. God commanded a day of rest 
Okay. God commanded a day of rest. And part of the reason why is because, listen to this, we fall apart if we don't rest. <laughs> we fall apart if we don't rest. So <clears throat> Moses somewhere in the Bible broke it down in a section. Now this I had to look, this shit I had to look up because again, don't, don't know all my bible things, but I thought it was fascinating. And that's why I'm sharing it with you because I, I like I said, you can just remove the religion part out of it. Just listen to the wisdom of this. <clears throat> the idea was, excuse me, people work six days a week. On the seventh day, right? I'm paraphrasing. No one should work. Not your son, not your daughter, not your cattle. Like nobody, right? On the seventh day. And then it says, God, when creating the world, again, take that for however you want to, took a day off to rest, so why can't you? <laughs> if even the divine... Right. If even like the divine, omnipotent, all the love that is the creator of the world, whatever, however you want to look at it. Right. I'm not putting words in your mouth and I'm not making assumptions about what that word God means to you or if God was the creator or whatever. I'm just saying, think about this. If the if the if the if the most creative life force that is created a day of rest and took a day off, why can't your ass do the same thing? <laughs> why do we resist it so much, you guys? Right. It's so funny. So the day of rest is really important because listen, we fall apart if we don't rest, right? The thing is, is that physical is, think about this. When you are physically exhausted, what's happening? You get broken down. Your immune system gets suppressed. This is when we're more likely like to get sick and all that stuff. The body gets so fatigued. The body gets run down because we insist on trying to make the body do a thing that it wasn't designed to do. There's a reason why we sleep at night. Do you know what I'm saying? It's built in to our um, well-being and our needs, right? Good food, good water, good rest, and some movement, right? Keep the body physically well. And part of the, one of the missing links in the food, water, um, you know, movement, exercise, whatever you want, however you move your body to keep it fit and healthy and, and uh, mobile and the joints good, you know? One of the biggest things, besides people not drinking enough water usually or eating, you know, shitty diets is like the rest piece. People just like, oh my God, they have such a hard time to do it. Um, <clears throat> and it, here's one of the things that we've done though. It, let's stay in this theme. Nowadays, with the compulsion to always be doing and always be going and always consuming and creating and content and fuck it. Oh my God, just the non-stopness of it. We've kind of made an idol. We've made like a false God of busyness, right? It's like the glamor, the glamorization or the glorification of busy. And it is not something that, um, I don't think it's something we should really aspire to. Now I understand, look at, I'm coming from a, you know, a poor blue collar kid background. I understand that taking time off for a lot of people is not always possible. So, you know, some people, I remember when I had my yoga studio, um, there was several years where I worked seven days a week, never took a day off. Um, and it took a toll, right? You end up feel, starting to feel like a little burnt out and stuff. So one of the things I'm going to say is if you find you're in that position where you're like, hey, I don't have that luxury, maybe we can find other ways within your day to not be so bombarded, to not be so exhausted by the input. You're already doing so much output. Maybe the input, meaning how much you're on your phone, how much scrolling you're doing, how much TV or news or whatever you're consuming. The, maybe in those moments when there is a pause, we don't fill it with busyness because a lot of times we also um, confuse resting with still doing things like scrolling, consuming content, looking at things. It's very rare that people, I shouldn't say it's very rare. I know some people who are actually wicked good at resting, <laughs> but for a lot of people, it can be rare that when they say they're resting, 
that they're not watching Netflix, reading something, doing something, listening to something, taking in a podcast, like whatever. Like sometimes we just really need to unplug from all of it. And this for me is the time when spiritual practice is so powerful because we unplug from the external world and we plug into source, whatever you happen to call that, God, love, universe, the light, your higher self, your higher power, your intuition, your divine intelligence. <clears throat> Don't get too hung up on what you call it. We all have different names for it. Um, but there's something very powerful about allowing yourself to unplug from all the external, just all the chatter, all the noise, all the energy, the commotion, the swirling, the doing, and coming back simply to being. There's something really, really, really important about this. And I think that, you know, we've been, we, like, think about your to-do list. So many of us have to-do lists where we're like, we're like this thing is never going to end. Yeah, I can cross a few things off it, but the next day I'm just going to add more shit to it. It's like, when does it ever end? When do we say enough is enough? When do we say enough is enough, right? And there's something really beautiful about this concept of the Sabbath, of a rest day, because for me, it's like, um, it's one of the ways that we can kind of push back against the man, <laughs> right? Claiming, hey, I don't answer my emails after 5 p.m. I don't answer emails on the weekends. I don't use Voxer or pick up my phone after 7 p.m. Whatever the thing is, we get to create healthy um, boundaries that give us breathing room, that allow our bodies, our cells, our nervous system, all the wiring to just chill out, to replenish and renew. I, I can't stress it enough how important it is that we refrain from all the doing all the time. And if you, I mean, if you resonate with this, just like uh, double amen hands, you know, and I get it. I get it how it can be really hard to not feel like that we're required to be available to the greatest society like all the time. Um, but we can't be running. Whew, we just cannot be running at full capacity all the time, you guys. Um, we need to rest and rejuvenate. And hopefully we can find ways to build this into our lives or into your business, especially, you know, the entrepreneurs especially the entrepreneurs. So when we rest, let's try to like really rest and not distract. Let's try not to um, feel the need that we have to um, resist it. <laughs> so for me, the Sabbath is kind of radical. This concept of, um, it's a form of resistance, not against resting, so instead of resisting a rest, why don't we resist all the busyness? It's a form of resisting the expectation that the larger world has put on us. Um, you know, and just ask yourself this question. Let's be really honest with ourselves, right? When I take a break, do I ever just take a break where I just simply sit still? Maybe it's you're listening to the birds. Maybe you're saying your mantra. Maybe you're just watching the waves roll in on the ocean, right? On the shore. Maybe you're um, just feeling the warmth of the sun on your face. Is there any time when you just allow there to be a renewal of the self without watching Netflix, without you know, going online, without scrolling through social media? Is there ever a time where you don't feel like you need to keep your ego entertained or distracted or busy? And part of resisting resting is because being alone with ourselves and being still with ourselves, a lot of times what happens is the thing that you've been trying to outrun or push down or suck it up and stuff it down, those hurts, 
those old things, right? Those worries, those anxieties, those little traumas, those dramas, those things. When we finally get still, they have an opportunity to surface for our attention, our awareness and our healing. And I've heard people say to me, I don't have the time to, I don't have the time to cry. I don't have the time to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I don't have the time to feel all my feelings. But if we don't allow rest, we're gonna fall apart. It's what happens, you guys. <clears throat> so here's the thing. We want to be able to really take the time to take care of ourselves. And, you know, self-care a lot of times gets thrown into that bucket of like, you know, oh, getting your nails done, getting a massage, like all these things, whatever. Um, but really it's like, we've got to break up, right? Self-care can look like I'm just sitting still and I'm breathing in some fresh air. It doesn't have to be these things where then we're booking appointments and we have to drive somewhere and go do something. You know, can we allow ourselves to just slow down and get out of the cycle of doing? Can we just allow ourselves to rest, to receive? You know, and it can be really hard. It can be really hard to do it. I get it. It's been, you know, I think it was ben, Benjamin Franklin who said back in the day, you know, time is money. Time is money. <laughs> if I'm not working, I'm not making the money. And I hear so many entrepreneurs say that. I can't take a day off. I'm the only one, right? I'm a solopreneur. I get it. I'm a solopreneur too. I get it. I get that fear. But here's the thing. Your creativity, the capacity to hear your intuition, to receive divine intelligence, to get inspired, inspired ideas. We need some breathing room. We need some space. We need some time to stare stupidly out the window. We need some time to daydream. We need some time to just be still. That's what's gonna actually make us better at our gigs, at our jobs, at our craft, at our art is allowing there to be a like, whoo. so moving from this place of contraction, I'm like balling up my fists. I always say love doesn't happen in this state, in a contracted state. It happens in this state. Whoo. Hands open, palms open, soft, relaxed, ready to receive. You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who suffer from having to be on all the time. Just imagine if you let, if you just put your car in the driveway and just let it run and 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 you never shut that shit off, there would be some issues. Some stuff would start to happen. The battery would wear out. It would run out of gas. It would stop working right. You feeling what I'm saying? So we often miss the opportunity to apply that wisdom to ourselves. Okay. I think that's, you know, that's, this is all I really want to say is I wanted to just bring it to, bring it to the attention, um, to the forefront because uh, it touched a nerve. This episode really touched a nerve. Like last week's episode, the replay that I did. And even that last week's episode, um, you know, let's talk about drinking. That was a really early, like an old episode that I did. And that episode really touched a nerve. Uh, and I thought it was a good time to re recreate it, to re-release it because I was sick and I was like, well, I can force myself to do a show right now, but why am I going to do that? And I felt myself resisting it. I was like, well, I don't want to re-release this. I want to do a good show. Like, you know, I want to show, I'm like, nobody's paying for this podcast. I do this for free. I pay, I pay for this podcast. I'm like, so, you know, it's going to be okay. Like I really had to talk myself through it because I'm so deeply conditioned, right? To, to, to do things in a very particular way. And so I'm kind of starting to like push back. I'm pushing back. I'm resisting that old way of being now. So now instead of resisting arrest, taking a rest, I'm resisting the bullshit that I've been sold that I've always had to do do, do, build, 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 go, 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 create, 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 right? I don't like being forced to be creative. 
I don't personally don't like to be forced to do anything. <laughs> you ask my sweetie. <laughs> but here's the thing. If we can learn to embrace resting, it's going to help us in so many ways. When you slow down, it deepens your thought process. It deepens your awareness of self. It deepens your response to how you're showing up in the world. It deepens your relationships. It deepens your knowing of yourself. So you show up more genuinely. When you have time to rest, you open up the doors for potential and possibility. There is so much power in the pause. And we forget this sometimes. And the thing is, is when you allow yourself to rest, you build up your reserves. You can come back to your work, to your relationships, to your project, to whatever it is that you're creating. You can come back to it with so much more enthusiasm and energy and life force. It's like, it's so good. It's so good. Um, give yourself to kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To like, uh, to teach your body, even teach your brain a new way of being. It's a radical rebellious thing to do nowadays, to shut off your phone, to unplug, and to just be with yourself and be with the God of your own understanding, to be with love or source or the divine or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> it's so powerful to do this because it also teaches you how not to be a divided person, a multitasking person. It allows, allows you to practice being incredibly present and to give your full attention, to just give your full attention and sometimes just give your full attention to, uh, 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 what's another way to say this? Like nothing, <laughs> just the present moment. So you guys, I hope this was helpful to you. And trust me, my brothers and sisters, if, if you find resting, uh, if you resist arrest as well, I want to just, um, I want to, I don't want to say challenge you. I want to invite you to giving it a go. What about practicing your own kind of Sabbath, your own day of rest? And I try to do this on Sundays, right? I really try. I've talked about this before. I really try to just say, hey, I'm going to take one day where I don't feel obligated or compelled to respond to anything. I mean, other than, of course, like if I got an emergency text or a call from a family member or something like that, or somebody really needed something. But other than that, I, I, I'm breaking the rules of society, which says that I have to be available and I have to respond within whatever period of time, you know, especially when I was sick. I mean, a bunch of people sent me requests and things that they wanted, like during, you know, when I'm, and I'm still, as you can hear, I'm still getting over the congestion and everything in my nose and my throat and my chest. Um, so I've been a little slower to respond to people and I just did it with no guilt whatsoever. I just said, Hey, you know, when, when I finally had the energy, I was like, Hey, just letting you know, um, I've been down with COVID and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I'm, I'm able and, you know, just whatever. So you guys, there's, there's a powerful tool that you also have in your email that's like an auto responder <laughs> that can just say, I am, I am away right now, or I am not responding to emails right now or whatever. We don't have to let other people's busyness and other people's dramas and other people's demands and other people's expectations uh, dictate how we live and how we show up. So let's end it on that note, okay? So I hope you're taking good care of yourself. I hope you're resting. I hope you're, you know, when I think, I'm going to do a whole show on this, like the four, the, the kind of the four things that we need to, to keep us healthy and that, that physical aspect, you know, as A Course in Miracles, we say we are not these bodies, but what these bodies do allow us to do like while we're here is for me, is, this is a way of um, spreading the good word and spreading love in the world, right? Using the body as a communication device to communicate who we truly are, to communicate love. Um, and part of it is communicating love to ourselves by not resisting arrest now and again when needed. Okay. All right. I love you guys. Wherever you go, may you leave the people, the place, yourself, the animals, the environment better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. you guys thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the karen kenny show <laughs> i super duper appreciate your time friendship and support and look if something that i shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours i'd love to hear about it 
So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.